What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host the podcast Across Worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. Today, we are reviewing Spirit Chronicles, and if you like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell, so you can know about the next upload, and if you like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Link for those are below. We are reviewing Spirit Chronicles episode 2. This episode was good. Yay! I'm so happy it was good because last episode we had our main lead, our protagonist, Rio. He sort of awakened to his memories from his previous life and he awakened magic. There's this being, I'm assuming she was a spirit, that helped him release his magic powers and kind of taught him by inputting it in his brain. And Rio saved a princess. And then her father, the king, one granted him an audience with him, and he rewarded Rio with a scholarship to the Royal Academy. So that's what this episode was about, the Royal Academy and Rio's time there. Now, like a lot of stories where there are, uh, there's a caste system, commoners, nobles, royalty, there was some discrimination, some prejudice, uh, some royals, some nobles bullying our commoner real. And it doesn't help that some of them have so much pride. Like there's just one character, you know, that one rival character, the one that takes everything so personally and forgets about being a gentleman, chivalry, the type of way you have to hold yourself as a noble. He totally disregarded that because of his prejudice against people who are from the slums and thinking he's superior to Rio. But then as you show that he's better at him at academics and uh, fighting, physical activities. Oh, he was getting mad. So we can definitely see that something's going to happen with this rival quote rival because it's not really a rival he's just more like someone who's got issues so, but anyways we got that too we know he's gonna come back later on <clears throat> and i think it's really interesting that there's this part where they're learning about fighting and such and the teacher the instructor he i guess he noticed that rio was kind of struggling with this style but he could tell that Rio was good at fighting so he asked Rio to spar with him and he said do whatever you're comfortable with and Rio did his I think it was Kendo that he was using he used that style oh and he was doing so good and the rival the kid that has issues he was like oh he's not even doing it right and everybody is praising Rio. Like, wow, he's doing really good. And the only thing he could think of to find fault in Rio is like, oh, he's not even doing it right. But shut up, okay? Shush. They haven't gone into magic yet. I was hoping they were gonna go into magic in this episode, but they did mention like the guy who used Rio as a rival. He said he doesn't know magic, but we know Rio knows magic. So I'm thinking Rio's keeping that under wraps. He's hiding that, you know, his secret weapon, his trump card. He's going like, ha ha ha, think again, kind of thing. We got that. And the princess that y'all know I don't like, the one that hit Rio. Apparently she has a name. Of course she has a name. Her name is Christina. And she's in Rio's class. And it looks like she's just observing him. Christina's in his class. But not the other princess, the one that he rescues. I'm, un I'm wondering, where is she? How come she's not there? Is it because she's a second princess and she doesn't need to go to school? Like, eh? Eh? Hmm. They didn't explain that. I hope they explain about that later on. And another thing that they showcase in this episode is Rio's relationship with Celia. But remember in the first episode where I said, we know we're going to see her again. We know they're going to build a relationship. Well, they are. They are. Celia ends up being one of his teachers at the Royal Academy. She teaches them how to read and write. Uh, they spend time in her office, her research room. Apparently, she's messy. And you see a time jump. Five years later, five years ago, 
her office was super messy because all her research materials were like all over the place because she has no care for that. Five years later, you see Ryo cleaning up. He cleans up for her and they always have tea together. So we see that they develop a strong relationship. And it's interesting because I believe she's older than Ryo. And she, they talk about friends. And when they talk about friends and Ryo says, oh, do you, do you want us to be friends? She's like, yeah, I want you guys to be, I want us to be friends. And then she does like that side eye look where it's like, yeah, I want to be friends, but I kind of not want to be friends. And not want to be friends, meaning she wants to be more than friends. But they can't be more than friends at that time because they're teacher and student. It's a no, no. No, no. Well, to me it is. Maybe there it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there has to be like a boundary. No favoritism, Celia. Okay. It's gonna cause problems for real. You know what I'm talking about, right? Where say that someone has a crush on Celia, or someone wants to be praised just as much from Celia, but then she always praises Rio, and then. Those people who vie for attention resent Rio, and then they target him and bully him, and the root of it was her. So I think that's why there should be a line. I'm just saying. Anyways, besides that, then the end of the episode, we have a tournament, a fighting tournament, and Rio is in it because he's good at fighting. Mm -hmm, yes, our protagonist is good at fighting. Yay! And then the one who reveals them as a rival, and that kid's Blackie, they're in the tournament too. Apparently, they were fighting against knights, which is interesting. Uh, I'm pretty sure they explained it in the anime why this tournament was made, but I find it interesting that they had kids fighting adults, like experienced adults. It's like, or is this supposed to be just for show? <laughs> To me, it looks like it's how they're evaluating their future knights. Uh, but the thing is, Ryo said he doesn't want to be a knight. He doesn't want to be one, and I think I know why. It's because he doesn't want to be restricted to that kingdom. He wants to be able to be free and explore, discover, search for his mom's home country, which is called Yagumo, and find his mother's killer. Because in the synopsis, they talk about how Ryo's looking for his mother's killer. He's trying to avenge her. So I think that's his like main, main, main goal. And to do that, he can't stay in the kingdom. Nope. Cannot. Anyways, so they're in the tournament. And Ryo's opponent was the vice captain that tortured him. Yes. Yes. Ryo kicked his butt. Yes. And, um, you know, Ryo's like, oh, thank you for what you did five years ago and the other guy's like hi we meet again and the way Rio was talking to him provoked him and you hear the vice captain's monologue his thoughts in his head he is like because of you I was demoted for five years because of you I was humiliated and it's like oh come on now hold yourself accountable for your actions for real um, we can see how your mind is, and you're dumb. So dumb that at the end of the episode, we see him and this other guy. This other guy that had red eyes, very similar to a hooded person that we saw in the last episode. This guy with red eyes was drinking with him. Drinking with him. The vice captain was intoxicated and was just blabbing all kinds of stuff and revealed that Rio was there in the incident when the princess was kidnapped. And now the guy with red eyes, who apparently is the one that was wearing the hooded cloak and killed the assassin dude with that red stone, he's got something sinister coming up. You could see the plans going on in his head. Yeah, and you're like, oh, you dumb, dumb vice captain. You just gave the enemy info and you, you were playing like a fiddle. Mm-hmm. The way he was pouring that cup with straight alcohol in. Mm. You were so drunk. And he kept making you drunk. More and more drunk. Until you blabbed everything. I'm wondering if this is how he got the princess kidnapped in the first place. Huh? Mm -hmm. 
Now, from this last scene, I'm thinking the next episode is going to be about that guy with the red eyes that had that red gemstone that killed the assassin. I think he's going to do something in the next episode. I think he's going to manipulate this vice captain to cause a lot of trouble. And because of this vice captain having a personal issue with Rio, Rio is going to be involved. So we'll see how this turns out, what the next episode will be like. This concludes my review of Spirit Chronicles Episode 2. What do you guys think about that episode? What do you think is going to happen on the next one? What did you think about this video? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord. Link is in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash lehuosuperbina. People who watch these videos, do like to stop by the stream, have a one-on-one -on -one real-time conversation. You guys are more than welcome. Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime and manga and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lehua, and this is the Super Fina channel, reviewing Spirit Chronicles Episode 2. Hope you guys like this video and I will see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there and I will see you on the next video. This bump.